Now, it's been about a week since a new fun little indie game uh, stole my heart. You probably haven't heard of it yet. It's called Pokemon Go. Completely understandable if you don't know what it is. Just type it in the search bar and lose yourself or go outside. There's so many fucking people. And I've been seeing a lot of videos about it popping up all over the internet. You know, top five things you need to know before you get into Pokemon Go. Top 10 things you need to know while you're in Pokemon Go. Uh, 15 quick ways to escape Pokemon Go. But I've noticed these all have something in common. They're actually missing the key concepts. See, you might see tips there like, oh, name your Eevee uh, Rainer to instantly evolve it into a Vaporeon. Pretty neat tip, by the way, you should try it out. Or save your Lucky Eggs to evolve all your Pidgeys. But these aren't the real things that you need to know going in. This is the 10 actual things you need to know before you play Pokemon Go. Number one is make sure when you install the app you definitely don't want to play right then, because that will ensure that the servers are going to be right up and ready to use. Like any good game, Pokemon Go has a real learning curve, and new players have to quickly understand that they're never actually going to be able to log on. The curve then plateaus at the top, where you can see players realize that they can never play the game, and they also see that their lives are pretty empty. Number two is to climb everything and anything around you. You know, the first thing I noticed is, there were groups of kids that would climb onto roofs looking for the Geodude, even when it was three steps away, and at first I didn't understand, but I began to realize. A lesser known mechanic is climbing things to impress your friends and look for Pokemon actually boosts the chance of finding them by at least 20 fold, so you want to make sure to do that. If you see a fence that's way too tall, top over. If it's barbed, that's actually bonus points. If you bleed, that's 40 times fold. I'm dying. Help me. Number three is when you go out with friends, make sure that you always ask their trainer level first, because there's absolutely no way you're ever going to be at the top, and it's best to just come to terms with it, so you take what they have and you always add one. And it's really that easy. And if I were you right about now, I'd be pretty bored with the tips, so I'm gonna switch it up a little, uh, and just give you a quick fact instead. And that is, blue team is the best team on Pokemon Go. Wow, I don't know where I'm getting these from. You always gotta remember that Pidgey and Rattata are important for the candies. Is the second you lose sight of that, is the second that you realize, I don't want to fucking be here, I don't care about whoever else is here, I don't care about the fun I could have, it's all goddamn rats and birds, fuck! Tip number six is make sure to level up as fast as you possibly can. You don't want to be wasting your Stardust on power-ups, and you want to make sure that you can easily get to a point where you catch higher CP Pokemon and you can easily put them into action. Tip number seven is actually don't ever level up. It's way easier to power them up than catch the higher CP Pokemon that you begin to see more and more, and your balls begin to curve too. So really, I think it's actually worth it to stay at a lower level. Tip number eight is lures are actually best for catching three things. Number three is Rattata, number two is Pidgey, and coming in at number one, boy, it's kids. Am I allowed to make that joke? Is that like, is that like okay? It's the internet, right? You can say that. And of course, tip number 10, if you're that Blastoise that ran away and you're fucking watching this, you can suck my- I'm king, and they know it! When I snap my fingers, send these bodies say sure it! I'm hot, and you're not! But if you want to hang with me, I'll give it one shot, top that! And a huge thanks to Swag King, the Phil Zhao, Solier, Keyboard Slapper, and all of my other patrons who really just make this possible. And thanks to these guys, I've actually hit my next goal in pledges, on Patreon, which means you can be expecting two streams and two videos a week from now on. Whew. And to go along with all this, I've actually added a new $5 pledge option where I'll call you out by name. Uh, and though I know it sounds like I'm selling my soul for YouTube revenue here, only partially. This actually got asked of me a lot to do, uh, and a few people have hopped in it already. So if you want to get called out in a video for supporting me a lot more than you should be, feel free. Alright guys, have fun, play nice out there, and just remember, fuck the fans and it's all for the money.